On April 1st, 2023, National Greeting Card Day, the CSPM launched C equals Current as part of our new Story of Us storytelling tool. Many of you likely recognize the Current brand name. Some of you may have worked for Current or knew someone who worked for Current or applied to work at Current. And many of you likely recognize the philanthropy of the Liu family in the Pikes Peak region. The Liu family and Current Inc. are a big part of the culture and history of Colorado Springs. Here is a photograph of the Liu family at the 1983 dedication ceremony for the expansion of the company headquarters on Woodman Road. From left to right are Gary, Orin, Miriam, Dusty, or Lester, and Skip, or Roger. By the mid-1980s, Current was producing magnets, keychains, tote bags, greeting cards, wrapping paper, checks, and more. The company employed upwards of 2,000 people, and this included departments in marketing, production, packing, shipping, and art. However, the beginning of Current was centered around a handmade album of 10 Christmas cards and the creativity, drive, wit, and talent of the self-made artist Oren Liu. His greeting card company was called Liu Art. Today I'd like to tell you about the early days of Liu Art, which was established in 1947, and a team of committed artists, Oren Liu, Joe Russo, Heidi Brandt, and Arthur Davies, who pulled the company through a rocky first decade to ultimate success. My research for this presentation was conveniently from the Liu Family Collection, which was donated by the family to the Colorado Springs Pioneers Museum in 2019. Through their support, we arranged, described, and the collection will be preserved in perpetuity. I also used the 1995 CSPM Oral History with Miriam and Oren Liu. And during this presentation, I will use Oren's own words to tell the story of Lou Art's beginnings. And we're going to start now by hearing him describe how he came up with Lou Art. How did you come up even with the idea to form Lou Art? Well, because I do, I do, I do art. I was the artist. I do greeting cards. Mm -hmm. And our first product was a personalized Christmas card album. Mm -hmm. The little thing we bought the covers of Woolworths, <laughs> and uh, they were about 25 cents for a little notebook, and then tied them with the red string, mm -hmm. and it had 10 pages in it with 10 different designs. I designed half the designs. Another artist in Kansas City, and used to be with Hallmark, designed the other half. Charged five dollars a piece for the designs, and uh, I did the, I did all the color separation on them. In myself, in your garage. In my garage, and then I, well, not I didn't work in the garage in the press. I worked in the house in the oh. comfort of a of a, a family, a really family little family room where I had a desk. As Oren Lu began his art training at the age of five at his family's kitchen table. His first artwork was created on the paper sheets that were used to separate shredded wheat cereal. He describes his childhood as happy, but the family was not well off, and this led to Oren always looking towards better days. As a young entrepreneur, he was selling his art by the age of 12, and each artwork was sold for a dollar. Self-taught, Oren left house painting journey ship <laughs> I didn't expect laughter from that, but it is funny. <laughs> Self-taught, Oren left a house painting journey ship in 1929 to apprentice with a lithographer named Walter Besser in Topeka, Kansas. Although he was taking a pay cut, he knew that this was a wise investment into his future. By 1932, to supplement his income as a lithographer, Lou also created signs and advertisements for local restaurants. That same year, he met his future wife, Miriam Baker, on the stage for a play at Washburn University. Oren was recruited by Miriam's sorority sister to howl like a wolf during the play. 
and when recalling first dating Miriam, Orrin noted that besides being great company, she also had a car, which Orrin did not. And this was considered a great perk. <laughs> Miriam also had a supportive family. His mother helped Orrin become the 11th artist at Hallmark Cards. And he retells that story here. Her mother saw an ad in the Topeka Daily Capital that Hallmark was looking for artists. Mm -hmm. So she said, Orrin, if you want to go, I was making $9 a week at that time as a lithographic a, 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 a apprentice with an old German lithographer in Topeka. And she said, Orrin, if you want to go down to Kansas City to apply for a job as an artist with Hallmark, I'll drive you down. Mm -hmm. So she drove Mary and me to Kansas City and I went and applied for a job, had some samples with me, and, and I was the only artist hired at that time. There were, there were 10 artists, and I was the 11th one. Oren soon became the director of lithography at Hallmark, and this credential came in handy when he was drafted for the Army during World War II. Stationed at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, he was assigned to the Command and General Staff Unit, which was a college for officers just outside of the base. In his absence, Hallmark was having trouble replacing Oren. As a result, they established an office in Leavenworth for him to run in the evenings. Here, Lou led a team of artists to create greeting cards specific to the war effort, like birthday cards that were sent between those serving overseas and back and forth to their families here. This is an example of a comic that Oren created during the war. When he returned to Hallmark in 1944, Lou did not intend to stay for long because he had Colorado on his mind. He recalls his first trip to Colorado Springs in 1940 here. First, we had a home at Woodland Park, uh, the Green Mountain Falls, a little cottage we rented, the Green Mountain Falls, and it was snowing when we arrived here, just, just snowing. I thought, my gosh, here we are on a vacation, it's going to be uh -huh. winter time. The next day was gorgeous, beautiful, mm. and every day thereafter was beautiful. And that's when I told you, I, when Mary and I drove all around Colorado, saw, went up top of Pikes Peak, saw the Raw Guards, mm. saw uh, the, well, almost all of Colorado, and fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. And I watched the people digging ditches as we were driving from Colorado Springs to Manitou, and I told Miriam at that time, look, these people have no more talent than to dig ditches, can live in this heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. And I, who have some talent, mm -hmm. we have to live in Kansas City where the climate isn't the best year round. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hot in the summer and cold. Humid. <laughs> and that's why we, when I said, if I ever am offered a job in Colorado Springs, mm -hmm. I'm going to take it. In 1946, that chance came, and Oren and Miriam Liu, with their two sons, Gary and Dusty, moved to Colorado Springs. Oren secured a job as an art director at Hobby Stationers. However, within a year, he became dissatisfied with the company, and he had two choices. He could go back to Hallmark in Kansas City, or he could start his own company here in Colorado Springs. And the choice was clear, and the risk was worth it. The first Lou Art headquarters, as we heard, was at the Lou family home. Here is Oren with his brother Lloyd Lou standing in front of the family garage. For Oren, the core of the company was art, and the most memorable employees were artists. I'd like to take a minute to explain how Current came to be and the connection with Lou Art. In the late 1940s, Oren introduced a new line of stationery called the post notes and they're essentially postcards, but there's more room to write on the back because the design's on the front where you put your address. The cards were originally marketed to be sold at, um, next to cash registers at drugstores and department stores. But Miriam had a new approach, which included direct marketing to church groups who could sell the post notes for fundraising efforts. So in, this was in 1950, and Current was born in the basement of the Liu family home. The company was wildly successful, and it often loaned money to Luart to keep them afloat. 
In 1967, Lou Art and Current merged. Lou Art continued to sell greeting cards while Current focused on mail order operations. By 1977, Lou Art stopped producing greeting cards and Current took the forefront. Oren and Miriam traveled seeking and supporting artistic talent as close as Santa Fe, but also across countries in Europe. However, two of the earliest Lou Art artists, Heidi Brandt and Arthur Davies, already established themselves as artists in Colorado Springs before joining the company. In 1931, a young Arthur Davies took a job as a doorman and usher at the Paramount Theater in the Burns Building in downtown Colorado Springs. He had recently graduated from Colorado Springs High School. He was soon lured in by a door labeled Art Department under the stage, which led to the cluttered studio of George Alston. Under Alston's direction, Davy soon found himself painting movie feature panels to be hung in the theater's lobby. And from the theater, Davies moved on to Alexander Film, where he produced um, film title panels, and then to Hobby Stationers, where he met Oren Liu. Two years later, Oren convinced Davies to join him at Lou Art. And Lou's May 1949 diary entry reads, good news, Art Davies has finally decided to come with Lou Art. And you could see him here in the back row with the checkered shirt. In 1961, Davies became interested in the art of calligraphy. And this soon turned into a passion. Davies' work can be seen on the Christmas cards, stationery, and posters produced by Lou Art. But his work was also displayed at Penrose Library, and he used italic uh, writing in everyday tasks, such as grocery lists and informal notes to his coworkers. In 1970, he won first place in the annual calligraphy competition of the Society for Italic Handwriting. He was the first person outside of Great Britain to win this award. Davies retired from Lou Art in 1975 and relocated to Eugene, Oregon to be with his family. He, he retained a relationship with Oren and he fittingly sent the Lou family a Christmas card every year. Before joining Lou Art as a full-time artist in 1954, Heidi Brandt worked as a freelance artist for the company. She was also involved with the arts community in Colorado Springs, exhibiting her work at the Fine Arts Center as part of the Colorado Springs Art Guild. Brandt grew up in Seattle, Washington, where she studied at Walla Walla University, and she met her husband there, a poet and German professor, Thomas O. Brandt. Their family moved to Colorado Springs in 1947, as Thomas took a position at Colorado College. As you see, Brandt preferred portraying humans in her work. She found them much more interesting than landscapes. In 1949, she was featured as the Woman of the Week in the Gazette. The article <laughs> celebrated her recent book, Doing Things, where she drew inspiration from her children and their neighborhood friend. The Gazette noted that her art enables grown-ups to recross the intangible border of childhood momentarily. She did not stop learning or expanding in her art. She was awarded the Fulbright Scholarship in 1946, and as a result, she studied at Stuttgart, Germany for a year. And she drew art from her surroundings, such as this linoleum print, which was produced after her family vacation in Mexico. Perhaps Brandt's most notable accomplishment was the fact that she, was the, she designed three Tuberculosis Association annual Christmas seals. This annual competition began in 1907, and when Brandt won, nearly 50 years later, she was the first woman to do so. By 1961, Heidi and Joe Russo were completing most of Lu the Luar Christmas cards. As you can see here, they were, and they were also presented to be, a team. 
1956, Joseph Russo moved from Syracuse, New York to Colorado Springs. He joined Luart that same year, and he specialized in watercolors and temperas. Like Lou, Russo began his career at a young age. However, rather than training at his family's kitchen table, he was studying at the Syracuse Museum of Fine Art by the age of nine. He later attended the Chicago Institute of Fine Art on full scholarship. In 1964, Russo opted to leave Lou Art and return to New York. He planned to study more art and also freelance but his exodus only lasted a year. As Oren described it in his diary, he tried the New York market for about a year and apparently did not like the East as a steady diet. <laughs> Russo ultimately stayed with the company into the late 1970s and he would eventually become the creative director. In 1966, when Heidi Brandt left, he became the art director. And in a Gazette feature article, he is quoted as saying, we rely on good, sound, academic art, which employs high quality painting to convey the Christmas spirit. This was reflecting his fine arts training. And although that sounded very serious, <laughs> his Santa greeting cards show that he brought a sense of humor to his work. He reflected that I like to put him in a dilemma where he is the butt of the joke. He becomes a Santa people can identify with. In another feature, Russo reflected on the constant design of Christmas cards where, at a company where Christmas is all year round. He says, yes, there are times I think it would be fun to design a Valentine or an Easter card. And this drive brought Russo beyond greeting cards. In 1969, his work was displayed at the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center as part of a one-man show. The Lou family purchased three of the 30 paintings that were on display. The first decade of Lou art was tumultuous and an uncertain one. For the first 10 years, Oren Lou's New Year's Day diary entries consistently stated, in all caps, Happy New Year, we are still in business. So, <laughs> but by 1958, the, with four full-time artists at Lou Art, the New Year's Day entry finally read, we are definitely in business to stay. Oren Lou described his business success as relying on a lot of luck. However, it is clear to me that by letting his passion in art lead his business endeavors, he created a work environment where creativity was evident and in return made Lou Art a success. As a result, he planted the seeds for the abundantly successful Current Inc. and the philanthropy of the Lou family for decades to come. Thank you. Thank you.